Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Less This House. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a middle-aged man, Bill, finishing a draft he had been working on for the whole night. A call comes in asking him about the drawing, and he reassures the caller that he has finished everything in just one night. Bill presents his drawing of a hotel to a group of potential clients. He pitches his plan, including his preferred materials. Someone from the group interrupts him to turn to his seatmate and ask for his opinion. The group voices out their thoughts, most of which are negative, not one completely sold with his ideas. The man who appears to be the head of the group walks out without another word. Later, the secretary informs him that he's being called to the boss's office. He sits in front of the man's desk as a big envelope is placed on it. He worries that he's getting fired. Surprisingly, the boss offers his hand. It turns out he got the project despite what was said by the group. The clients were actually thrilled with his proposal. Happy with his result, Bill is promoted to design supervisor. Without telling his family about his promotion, Bill takes them to a very fancy restaurant. His daughter Jane and his wife worry they can't afford it with his meager salary. They try to convince him to get wine and noodles instead, but he insists they stay. The wife asks him apprehensively if he's alright, and he tells her that sometimes you have to resign yourself to fate, subtly hinting that things aren't good. Unable to keep his secret any longer, Bill hands over the paper, indicating that he's been promoted, and the whole family starts celebrating in excitement. The next day, the whole family and Burley, Jane's friend, are on their way to check out the garden villa that the boss owns. As part of his promotion, the boss has given the place to Bill and his family to stay in for free. By nightfall, the group arrive at the villa. Jane comments that the house is too old. However, whatever the house lacks outside, it makes up for it inside, since it's spacious and has a lot of luxury furniture. Unfortunately, their celebration is short-lived when a moving company knocks on their door to take away all of the stuff that's inside the house, as ordered by the boss. The wife cries and tells Bill that she knew their good luck was too good to be true. Bill comforts her and argues that they can just refurbish the place. He asserts that they can buy what they need one at a time and explains that there are always ups and downs in life and they should be ready to take on things as they come. While lighting one of the candles in the kitchen, Jane finds a creepy man eerily smiling by the window. She screams, and everyone rushes to her aid. The mother asks her what the matter was, but all she can utter is that there was a ghost by the window. When they look out the window, nothing's there. On moving day, the mother asks Burley for help to move a potted plant back and forth. While no one's looking, the potted plant slides back to its original position. When the mother turns around and finds the potted plant, she scolds Burley for not listening to her, which confuses the younger man, since he was sure he had moved it as she requested. Jane goes out to get a couple of newspapers from the trunk of their car. A figure stands on top of the rooftop, gazing down at her. She looks up in fear, but the figure is no longer there. When she closes the trunk, the creepy man asks her if they're moving in and goes to look through their stuff. Creaked out with him, she threatens to call the police if he doesn't leave. He walks away, but warns them not to move in, or else they'll regret it sooner or later. The family goes to the roof storehouse to store some stuff they no longer need. As the mother tidies up, her arms land on a box that's surrounded by roaches. She realizes it too late and screams out loud. Bill tries to help her out, but a roach crawls up on his arm as well. About to run out, he accidentally steps on a framed photo. The family looks at it, and the mother comments that it must be the previous household. Burley calls them for lunch, and the family leaves the room. With the door firmly closed, a ghostly figure throws the framed photo away. Bill wakes up at midnight and heads for the roof storehouse, where he hears someone speaking strangely. He finds nothing inside, and is surprised when he finds Jane standing by the door, looking for him. She asks him if he heard a strange cry, and he denies this. Jane discloses that something's weird about the house. However, her father refuses to believe it. The next day, while fixing the wallpaper, Jane falls off the ladder, after uncovering a couple of disturbing drawings on the wall. She calls Burley over. While covering up the drawings, Bill makes light of them and tells Jane not to worry, as he's sure they might be drawn by some naughty children. After dinner, Burley offers to wash the dishes. He prays that the typhoon reported to be headed for Hong Kong comes faster so that the family have to let him stay. If in that case, he can stay up late with Jane. While daydreaming of that, a ghostly figure takes one of the pans and hits him on the head. The typhoon does arrive early, and public transportation is closed early to keep everyone safe. Burley stays as he planned, but the family banishes him to the couch. Late at night, he sneaks up the stairs to knock on Jane's door. She scares him with a mask, and they get caught by the mother. She reprimands the two, so he goes back downstairs. Jane scares Burley again while wearing the mask and hands one over to him. He tries to dissuade her, pretending that the mother might berate them. But she convinces him to put it on, 
and they start kindling. While doing so, the real Jane walks over to the banister to check on him. She sees the boy writhing on his own, which she finds weird. Burley notices the real Jane upstairs walking away, and pushes whoever's on his lap away. It's a scary ghost, who continues to candle Burley despite his protest. Finally believing Jane, Burley agrees that there's something wrong with the house, and brings her to an exorcist to ask for help. The man starts spouting nonsense, and attempts to do a breathing exercise on Jane, telling Burley he has to do it on her chest, and reaching to touch her. Burley waves him off, but the exorcist continues. Tired of the arguing, Jane asks the man if he's an exorcist or a pervert. Embarrassed over his attitude, he asks Jane about their house, and they bring him over. The exorcist asks Jane and Burley to leave the room, so that he can perform his ritual in peace. Jane doubts he's a legitimate exorcist, but Burley reassures her that he's very experienced, vouching for him since he was also a classmate of his. They listen through the door. While the exorcist starts his ritual, a vacuum moves on its own, to clean up the holy powder he had sprinkled around to protect himself. He grabs a sword to fight off the vacuum, but to no avail, and the sword is dulled around the edges now. The vacuum then chases him. When it goes quiet, Burley enters the room to check on the exorcist. Out of nowhere, a sack falls from the ceiling. Burley opens it, only to find the exorcist inside, with bruises all over his face and body. In fear, the man runs his smelly ass away in four limbs. That night, Bill comes across an interview done by the exorcist. He talks about ghosts in his segment, and Bill turns the television off after exclaiming that it's nonsense. Later, he hears a noise. He searches for it, and realizes it's coming from the roof storehouse again. He checks inside, and comes across a scary ghost woman. He runs away in fear. Later at work, a co-worker of Bill greets him and asks him how he is. Bill tells him that he didn't sleep well, and the co-worker bluntly tells him that he knows Bill doesn't believe that. He gives him a spell, that advises him to move out of the house as soon as possible. Back home, as Bill's opening the gate to his house, the creepy man comes up to him. He mistakes him for an illegal immigrant, and gives him money as donation. As soon as he touches his palm, the man starts shaking in fear, drops the money, and walks away. He repeats his warning for them to move out before it's too late. It's revealed that the creepy man is a jumping Buddha, who can see ghosts. During dinner, Bill acts strangely. He looks to be in a daze. Jane admits to him that she asked the exorcist to exorcise the house, but nothing happened. She encourages her father to move out, but he refuses, slamming his hand on the table, causing a hot soup to spill all over his lap. He barely flinches, which confuses Jane, since the soup is still steaming. The next day, Jane finds her father sleeping on his desk. She wakes him up, and reminds him to go to work. Bill rushes to leave, when Jane notices a photograph on his desk. Bill comes back, and forces his daughter back down on his seat. He starts talking about her mother being a tramp while he was weak, and that she gave birth to a child that's not his. It seems someone else has taken over Bill's body. But he snaps out of it, after accidentally stabbing himself with one of his pens. When he's of sound mind, he rushes to the office, but is extremely late. On top of that, he has forgotten to bring most of his stuff, which means he can't make his presentation at the meeting. Embarrassed, he apologizes and leaves early. On his way out, Bill hears his boss instructing the secretary to take the villa back, since he's been behind his work ever since they moved to the house. Bill tells the secretary that he'll give it back. When Jane gets home, she finds her younger sister climbing to the roof storehouse. Jane takes her back to her crib, and tells her not to go anywhere. As she walks out of the room, she finds the wallpaper torn down, revealing the weird drawings on the wall again. This time, she sees the whole picture. It's a drawing of a man killing his family. Jane and her parents get into a huge argument. The mother blames Jane for the torn wallpaper, while Jane argues about the haunted house. At the office the next day, the co-worker intercepts Bill, and finally reveals to him the real tragedy that happened at the house. It turns out, an actor and his family used to live there. However, after an accident and being wheelchair-bound, the actor lost everything and ended up killing his whole family. He then set fire to the house. It turns out, for money saving, the boss never got the house blessed, which is why the family is still haunting the place. Having a small breakdown, Bill destroys his stuff at home, before picking up a sword and challenging the ghost father to come out and fight. The ghost father uses Bill's reflection to tell him that they're doomed to end up like they did. Jane and Burley decide to end whatever is going on at the house. They head for the temple to look for the jumping Buddha, and ask for help. They find him, and he explains that the spirits have been seeking their doubles to resurrect themselves. The jumping Buddha has been trying to guard the place and get rid of the spirits, what to no avail. Back at home, the ghost father finally shows himself to Bill. With his supernatural power, he throws Bill inside a closet to cut him in half. The wife hears Bill screaming, and hurries down the basement, finding the ghost father. She screams in fear, but when she hears Bill's cry for help, she musters enough courage to push the ghost father down the stairs, which stops the attack. 
and the electricity starts sparking. The wife hurries to help Bill out of the closet to escape. As they're driving away, the mother looks back and finds Jane running inside the house. They try to scream for her to stop, but it's raining really hard that she doesn't hear them. With no choice, Bill goes back to the house and instructs his wife to take the little daughter and leave, in case they never come out. It's taking too long, so she enters the house despite Bill's instructions, leaving the little daughter in the car. She calls for her husband and daughter quietly, then trips over Jane, who's tied up. Jane begs her mother to leave or they'll die. Bill appears, but this time he's possessed by the ghost father and carrying their little daughter. The clock strikes midnight. He throws the little girl towards the couch and douses them with kerosene. The ghost father believes that if he kills them, he'll be reincarnated. Right at that critical moment, the jumping Buddha jumps through the window and covers the girls with a cloth filled with spells. He fights with the possessed Bill, and after a fast and furious fight, he successfully drives the ghost father out of his body. They think it's over, but the ghost father materializes. Early arrives, carrying the bone ashes of the jumping Buddha's master. They think it'll stop the ghost father, since it's the ashes of a respected religious figure. But unfortunately, Early gets thrown off by the ghost father. He instructs Bill to throw the ashes instead to stop the ghost. So Bill uses an electric fan to spray the ashes all over the ghost father, which immediately drives him away. The next day, Bill decides to get the house demolished. The co-worker hurries over to tell Bill that the boss is angry and wants compensation, since he has already found a new tenant for the house. Bill tells him that they need to destroy the house first, and the co-worker promises to arrange the rights to appease the spirits. The boss arrives later in anger and threatens everyone who has a hand in destroying the house. Annoyed, Bill operates one of the machines and lifts the boss by his coat. He begs for Bill to put him down. Bill demands his promise not to take any more tenants for the house, but the boss refuses. Bill tells him okay and drops him over some trash. However, when the boss looks to the side, he finds a ghost mother carrying her baby there, scaring the shit out of him. On their way out, they come across the jumping Buddha, who is still alive but badly beaten up. The movie ends with the co-worker excitedly running up to Bill to give him news that his cousin in Singapore is paying him double to work on his new hotel. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.